Hey everybody on YouTube, on my prime time, on my Tanya's prime time TV slash media reviews channel, and everybody on my Instagram. Please make sure you go over to my YouTube channel called Tanya Knows No Limit because that's where I am going live from tonight. And we're going to be discussing um, a viral, a video that has gone viral um, regarding a pastor. Antonio Rockamore from Chicago, Illinois, uh, from Powerhouse International Ministries Church, who is currently under fire with the LGBTQ and a lot of other people regarding him kicking out a woman, actually a man dressed as a woman in his church that appeared to be like a drag queen. So it's a lot of controversy going along, going across the world right now because of this video. So please go over to my Tanya Knows No Limit YouTube channel right now so you can see us live and join into our discussion. Thank you. Come on in, everybody. Oh, are we buffering? Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Maybe I got too many windows open. Let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. Ooh, excuse me. Bless me. Please let me know if you can see and hear me okay. Please and thank you. For those of you who are coming on the live, want to make sure we're not having any technical difficulties <laughs> tonight. Come on in. Please make sure you like the video. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are not already a subscriber. And please, please do me a favor and share this video. Share it on your social media um, platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, whatever social media that you use. Please go ahead and share that. I'm going to wait a little bit before uh, some more people can get into the room before we start. And besides that, I just posted to my other uh, YouTube channel for people to um, come over to this channel so they can watch the live review. It looks like I'm coming in good, coming in clear. For those of you who are watching now on Instagram and uh, YouTube, I got a piece of hair in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> what we're going to be discussing tonight, um, like I just said on my video that I just posted on Instagram, we're going to be discussing a pastor in Detroit, I'm sorry, not in Detroit, <laughs> so much has been going on in Detroit lately, and I done done a couple of videos on things going on in Detroit, I don't know, I guess that's why that came out, but anyway, um, it's a Chicago pastor, and he kicks out one of his parishioners out of the church for dressing in drag, um, the name of the pastor is Antonio Rockamore, R-O-C-Q-U-E, M O R E. I never seen that name spelled that way. But anyway, um, that's what we're going to be discussing tonight. The name of the video I did title it as um, 
what is the true meaning of come as you are when it comes to churches, um, when it comes to, you know, trying to worship and, you know, what you wear, your attire, what you look like, your hair, your makeup, your shoes, you know, what is the true meaning of come as you are? Um, is it all in mainly your appearance? Or does it only apply to the inside or the outside? So that's what we're going to be discussing tonight. So again, um, I'm going to let, let a few more people come into the room before we get started. Hey, hi, Black Mirror. How are you? Can you hear me okay? I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. <laughs> make sure everybody can see me and hear me good. Oh, matter of fact, I forgot I got to uh, turn on the phone lines because we will be taking calls about this matter <laughs> this evening. I hope you guys got to see the video that I posted earlier about that pastor, but some of you probably already um, know about what's going on and probably already seen the uh, the video. That's good. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Have you seen the video about that pastor? Um, pastor Antonio Rock Rockamore, the one who put that uh, man out the church. And it, the video that went viral, <laughs> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> if so, what do you think about it? Let me know, let me know what y'all think about it. That's what I'm trying to find out tonight. And I hope we got some um, saints, sinners, and in between in the building tonight. <laughs> Because um, this situation, this uh, conversation might get a little bit serious. You said all over the place, but not the entire video. Well, I do have the entire video. <laughs> How brother Jay say video? I have the entire video. But I just um, posted to my other uh, YouTube channel for everybody to come over here. Because I got two different YouTube channels. So make sure you subscribe to this one and the other one too. The other one is called Tanya's Primetime TV slash media reviews. So that's my other channel. And then, of course, I'm on Instagram at Tanya Primetime TV. And we also have a Facebook group. Matter of fact, let me um put the Facebook group on here. I almost forgot. I normally all the time put the Facebook uh, group link in the chat first before anybody even come into the room. So I'm slacking tonight. But I literally just got off of work. Y'all can't tell, but if I ever had this blue shirt on, this is my work shirt. <laughs> I work part time at a nursing home and um, literally just got off of work, came in, the, ran in the house, uh, posted my notifications real quick. So people can know I'm about to go live and jumped on the video. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here is our Facebook group. Let's see. And of course, the Facebook group is the same name as our YouTube channel. It's Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. So, let me go ahead and, hmm, let's see. But everybody, please come on in. Please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber. And make sure you share. Again, please share this video on your YouTube. On Oh, that's how you found this one? <laughs> okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome sauce. Let me see if that link works. Okay. All right. So I just posted the link to our Facebook group, Tanya no, Tanya's uh, Primetime TV slash Media Reviews.
Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hopefully many more will come, but um, hey, <laughs> if you're used to doing lives, you know that some of them will, um, some of them will be deep and some of them won't be deep. But I always move forward anyhow. And then people who didn't get to catch me on the live, they'll, you know, get to catch it later. They'll watch it later. But anywho, I'm going to play this video um, for those people who probably didn't see the entire video. I'm going to play this video. And, oh yeah, let me make sure I got the phone lines on for the people who might want to call in. I'm going to turn the phone lines on real quick. Make sure everything is plugged up. Everything looks okay. Access code or phone number you have dialed is incorrect. Okay, let's try that one. Access code accepted. Okay, I got the phone lines on, and uh, the phone number is right there on the screen, 641-715-0872, that's the phone number, and access code 434-478. You said the link is working? Okay, let me see over here. All right, I just got your request. All right, I think I just added you. Let me know if you saw the notification that I added you. Because I think your Facebook name isn't the same as your uh, YouTube name. But I think I just added you. Okay, okay. That must have been you, though, because it said um, somebody requested to join like a few seconds ago. So I'm sure it was you that I added. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mine isn't either. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my first name is part of my uh, Facebook name. <laughs> but um, YouTube be tripping. Like a couple of years ago, they started um, trying to make people change their... Uh, Facebook profile name to their exact name, their exact first and last name. Um, you can have like something maybe in parentheses, like uh, my real, um, my name on my Facebook page, you know, I'm a cake decorator, um, which is what I'm about to get into after this live. I got like a lot of cakes to make by Thursday morning. I'm trying to finish them all by tomorrow night. But anywho, so it has Cake Lady in parentheses um, on my uh, Facebook Facebook page. But I used to be called Tanya Cake Lady something, something, something. And Facebook made me change my name. I was like pissed. <laughs> but anywho, anywho, let me go ahead and play this video for you guys. Um, other people who are coming in afterwards, I'll probably play the video like 15, 20, 20 minutes from now again but this video you guys is about uh it's about three or four minutes i think so y'all get y'all little drinks get y'all little coffee your tea your pop your henny whatever you drink on i ain't gonna judge you i ain't gonna judge you <laughs> and get some popcorn and get ready for this video matter of fact let me turn the volume down on the phone on the conference caller so it won't interfere with the video. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Okay, here it is. And again, this this uh, pastor's name is Pastor Antonio Rock Rocklamore or Rockmore, something like that. And he's from the south side of Chicago. So here we go, y'all. You sit on in the aisle, please. <laughs> Can you leave my church and go put on main clothes? And don't come here like that no more. 
Thank you, Jesus. I, I hold a standard in here. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do on the house side is your business. Mm -hmm. I would not let drag queens come in here. And y'all gonna come in here, you're gonna dress like a man. Now, whatever you do on the outside, <coughs> that's your business. But when you come in this house, if you're a man, dress like a man. If you're a woman, you dress like a woman. I'm not going to allow it. My salvation is more important. And God is holding me accountable. Now, whatever you do outside these doors, I don't bash, I don't judge. But when you come in here, you will not be a drag queen. Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost tell me in my spirit that this drag queen sitting here with wigs on, I'm going to ask you to be removed from the sanctuary. I will not play this thing. You will not, I don't care if you don't clap and you don't like it, don't come here. You will not be playing wigs and heels and fooling people up in here. Come on. So you can fool people but see I got the Holy Ghost for real I can pick your spirit up in the back of the church Hallelujah. now if you, if you don't know me don't come here and play with me okay I can pick the spirit up he was bothering my spirit I had to see what he had on because that's a man that's not a woman now whatever you do on the outside between you and God you can dress drag all day but you gotta respect the rule of the house now he may allow it at other churches but if I know you a man with a wig on I'm either gonna snatch that wig off or you got to get up out of here cause as for me and my house y'all ain't talking you may have to never come back here but you're not gonna wear no heels in here come on Anybody that know my preaching, you know I don't call fags. Come on, come on. I don't do I don't do no bashing because everybody is struggling with something. But what I'm not gonna do is allow you to disrespect the house of God. Now, that I can't do. You gonna talk about me put me on live today. Come on. Okay, you can spread this all over the world and tell every drag to come and trap me. Because I stand for holiness. I can't make nobody live right, but I'm going to make you respect this house at 70, 40 Southwestern or don't come here. Don't come here throwing no weed and you a man. Come on. Come on. We're not, we're not gonna do that down up in here. Come on, come on, come on. I knew something was messing with my spirit. Come on, man. Now other churches will go for it because they like the compromise mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why the Holy Ghost can't dwell there. Come on! The spirit and the real authentic oil can't dwell where you compromise and mess up. Come on! Come on, sir! I know I ain't gonna get too many people to scream when I say this, but holiness is still right. See, that's not okay, y'all. He felt it in his spirit that something just wasn't right with that guy um, in his church. How do y'all feel about that? Like, Honestly, how do y'all feel about that? I titled this video, um, What is the True Meaning of Come As You Are? Hey, Monica. How you doing, Miss Lady? <clears throat> Make sure you guys, um, take note of the, uh, call-in number. The call-in number, again, is right on the screen. <laughs> I always put it on the screen so you guys don't have to write it down. You just look at it. Um, just make sure when you call in, uh, when I answer, you make sure you turn your volume down on whatever you're listening to me from, whether it's your computer or your laptop or whatever. Make sure you turn your volume down so there's no back noises. But um, that was the video of 
the pastor that has been going viral um, over the last week or so. His name again is Pastor Antonio Rockmore. And let me put my little notes up here. Okay, Rock Rockamore. I keep saying Rock Lamore, but it's Pastor Antonio Rockamore. Um, he's the pastor of the Powerhouse International Ministries in Chicago, Illinois. And he's come under fire from advocates of the LGBTQ community and people outside of the community, just general people, um, for publicly, they call it rebuking a male member of the church. But basically, um, a lot of people are in an uproar, not only because, um, like I said, not only the LGBT community, but just regular, normal people, regular people who aren't gay or bi or transgender or, you know, questionable, you know, just regular people. Oh, I'm doing good, honey. <laughs> I was telling everybody earlier, Monica, I had just literally got off work. I was like, y'all see, I got my shirt on, my little blue shirt. Um, we can wear our little uh, work shirts every now and then. <laughs> normally, um, I work at the front desk, but normally, you know, we got to wear, you know, business casual clothes. But sometimes I wear my little my little T-shirt with our business logo on it when I want to feel real casual. <laughs> but anyway, um, tell me what y'all think about that video. You said the laugh was re your drink statement. My video. Oh, <laughs> I got you. I got you. BLK. <laughs> oh, is it Black Mirror? I said BLK. <laughs> Black Mirror Mirror. I don't know why I said BLK. <laughs> I'm tripping. But anywho, um, the guy that he uh was talking about. Let me. Put his video. Let me put his photo up. Let's see. Okay, here it is, right here. How well you can see it. It's the guy right here with the fan. Now, you see others out there, they're protesting. One of them says hate speech causes gay. Oh, hate speech, hate speech causes death amongst gay youth. I think that's what it says. And um, the other one says God loves all. So now these, uh, the other people that are standing next to him, next to him, don't quote me, but I think those are I think those are gay women, um, lesbians. Um, I know I don't know what the proper word is, but I know a lot of people call them studs. I know I got family members, and that's what they call each other. You know, they're you know lesbian women who portray themselves as guys, or you know, live as as a guy or I don't want to disrespect anybody. So, <laughs> you know, don't quote me on the proper, uh, verbiage that I should use. But anyway, the guy with the, uh, fan, uh, with the green hair and the black jacket and the look like a burgundy shirt. Um, that is the guy actually, his name is Antoine. And he's the guy that the pastor was speaking about. He was the one dressed in drag. Um, let me pull it up real quick. Um, Antoine Haywood, that's his name. The guy with the big fan. His name is Antoine Haywood. Um, he says he was discriminated against when he was asked to leave uh, by the pastor for dressing like a woman. Um, then it says about 10 people who were not church parishioners quietly protested outside of the Powerhouse International Ministries Sunday, you know, holding signs against hate speech. So this was like really recent. This was like a week or so ago. Um, and I guess I have been hearing, let me put the camera back on me. I guess I have been hearing lately that 
the pastor had actually asked him on several occasions, on several occasions to stop dressing like a female when he comes into the church. Um, and that is why I titled this video, what does it really mean to come as you are? Because some people, I guess it's a misunderstanding among some people. Like some people feel like come as you are. Okay. Some people feel like come as you are, um, like, like my church and like almost every single church that I belong to. And I really only belong to, there was a church when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, um, I was there till I was about 12. Then I was at another church till I was about mm, 19, 20. And then after that, I didn't go to church for a minute. And then my godmom, she had actually become a pastor and I had joined her church for a while. And then I'm at the church where I'm at now. Uh, but out of all those churches, we always had where it really wasn't no issue. If women came to church in pants, you know, a lot of churches accept that. Um, there also is no, has never been an issue when women or men came in jeans. I didn't see people in t-shirts, um, jeans sneakers uh heck i know one time i went to church in sneakers uh i had to be in my part-time job at the nursing home you know right after church and you know i had on my work pants and which were slacks by the way and i had on sneakers which were all black nike sneakers if you weren't even looking really close you wouldn't even be able to tell they were sneakers but anywho um a lot of people think when it says come as you are, that is like if you cannot afford the best type of clothes, because um, everybody knows some churches, it's all about what you look like in the church. Everybody's looking around trying to figure out what, who got on, uh, where they get their dress, where they get their pocketbook, you know, <laughs> who did they hair. Um, it's like a fashion show. We all know that some churches is like a fashion show and some people don't go to certain churches. Matter of fact, we have a church here and I'm not going to say the name, but anybody locally probably knows exactly what church I'm referring to. But for many, many years, I hear all the time from certain people about this church that they never ever went to that church or felt comfortable because like the ladies would be like so snatched in this church, I mean, so snatch, really expensive clothes and jewelry and, you know, fancy cars. And they would feel like, like they didn't fit in or uncomfortable, you know, in the sanctuary in those churches. And so they would tend to go to other churches because a lot of people um, can't afford very, very expensive clothes. And some people in some churches do look at people a certain type of way if they don't look like them. It shouldn't be that way, but we all know it is. <laughs> we all know it is. So, anywho, as far as like the churches I belong to, though, I never ever can say that I ever felt like I didn't fit in because I'm not wearing a five hundred five hundred dollar dress or you know. And I grew up as a tomboy, so I don't dress like that anyway. I think I probably wore a dress as a grown woman. I probably wore a dress maybe three or four times. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I'm over 35. <laughs> so that tells you how much of a tomboy I was when I was growing up. I kind of carried it into my grown up life and I wear pants. I don't go to church in jeans unless it's um, not uh an actual church service going on you know what i mean like some kind of event where we can dress down um but i normally wear slacks and a nice blouse and some nice boots or some nice uh little heels some flats you know <laughs> but anyway some people think that's what it means to come as you are and then other people they take it a little further um what it means to uh come as you are like if you're a sinner if you're sinning, 
if you're an alcoholic, if you do drugs, you know, if you, you know, just, just any type of sin like that, you know, we all have sin. We all have sin. We all still sin. I don't care what nobody says. We all still sin. We might not go out and murder nobody or rob a bank or, um, or hurt a child. If you know what I mean, like hurt a child, but we all have sin. And what I found interesting, I was watching uh, T.S. Madison the other day, or was it today? Well, no, it was yesterday. And she was saying how uh, a lot of times it comes down to the fact that when you come to church and you're gay, or you're a stud, and again, don't quote me on the right terminology. I don't know it. I'm not trying to offend anybody who's gay or lesbian or you know transgender. Um, but a woman, a lesbian woman who dresses like a guy, I'll say that with a brush cut, you know, you know, dressing like a guy. Um, and I have several, again, like I said, in my family, and we have the type of family where it's like nothing to us. You know, that's my cousin. That's my dog. That's my girl. You know, <laughs> grew up together, threw up together. You know, it don't matter if she's gay, straight, you know, and guys too. It's the same way. But um, they look at the outside when they judge your sin, not knowing your inside. Like she had mentioned, like if, you, if you're a pedophile, and you come to church, people might not know that behind closed doors you're molesting and raping little kids. They might not know that. So they treat you as a regular old Christian up in the church, serving God, praising the Lord, paying your tithes, but let you come in the church dressed as uh, the opposite sex or looking like you're gay or lesbian or something. It's automatic like, get out of here. Not at all churches. But get out of here as as that Chicago pastor. Let me take a second to read some of the comments in the chat. Um, okay, Black Mirror, you say, my thought is come as you are in life mentally. Okay, and come as you are wherever you are in life. Can't come fixed. Come as your mindset and lifestyle. That's my opinion. And that's my, that sounds like my opinion as well. That really sounds like my opinion as well. Um, just making sure I got the phone lines on. Okay. The, also the phone lines are on you guys. So, um, if you want to call in and make a, make a comment, there's no time limit unless we get a lot of people on the line. So if you want to call in and state your uh, comments, um, Blazing, I agree. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> but if you want to call in, the phone number is 641-715-0872. It's right on the screen. Access code 434-478. But... A lot of people do that, Blazing. They like to interpret things to fit their beliefs or moods. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. But with that pastor, um, what I has what I had read somewhere else was, um, yeah, I agree. He, I thought he was out of line too, like big time. I thought he was out of line. Um, and a lot of people are outraged about it. And what he was saying in the video was like. Um, he, he did say, I don't care how you dress outside of church, in your own home, out in the streets, you know, out in the world. But on the flip side, like it says, come as you are. And okay. If somebody came dressed in, if a man came into church, dresses in the, uh, um, a wig or, you know, a dress high heels or whatnot. I mean, nobody comes to church fixed. If we all came to church fixed, <laughs> most people wouldn't even go to church. Most people wouldn't even go to church. A lot of people go to church because 
they need somewhere where they can worship with like-minded people, people who believe in God, people who are there to, you know, support one another and pray together and worship together and, and lean on each other and, you know, things like that. Um, I go to church because I just like church. I've been in church since I was, God, four years old. Like literally four years old. I remember going to church almost <laughs> all the time growing up. Like almost every single day. We went to one of those Pentecostal uh, Pentecostal Holy Roller churches. We had church sometimes for weeks and weeks and weeks. Seven days a week. <laughs> I mean, revivals, church revivals back to back. Sunday school, church afternoon church, evening church, go visit somebody else church. I mean, it, we was in church so much. I remember one time I could literally like quote almost every scripture there is. Like we used, and then I went to a uh, uh, Christian school for junior high. And every time we would get in trouble, what did we have to do? We had to read the Bible starting at Genesis. Chapter one, verse one. And I used to get in trouble all the time. <laughs> so that lets you know <laughs> I knew my Bible. <laughs> but um I don't I I believe that too, Blazing. Um as far as the church is God's house, like, oh, that's what they were saying. They were saying the guy, the pastor, uh Pastor Antonio, they were saying the church, no matter who built it, no matter how much money it costs to make it, no matter how much money you put in, your tithes, your offerings, how much you put, you know, on the church fund, the building fund, whatever, it's still God's house. It's still God's house, and everybody is supposed to be welcome in God's house. But the way he came across was like, this my church. You ain't going to be in my church. You didn't get out of my church. Don't come back no more. Put on a dress. I don't want to see you in here in my church anymore without a dress. And it was just so condescending and demeaning. Like, he like humiliated this man. And I... <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I just feel a certain type of way about that. I understand the preachers, especially the old school preachers. Um, you know, the set in their way preachers who don't like to always look at the times as okay. We all know it ain't nothing new under the sun when it comes to general stuff. Ain't nothing new under the sun. But times do change, and you have to sometimes bend to change with the people, to reach the people. That's how I feel. Yeah, I feel that too. And then, Blazing, did you see where um, they said uh, the pastor had told him several times, I think I read that earlier, the pastor had told him several times on three different occasions, three different occasions that dressing like a woman is against church rules. And during these those private sessions, the pastor, is, they said he utilized love, compassion, thoughtfulness, and articulating the church policy. And they say that the young man agreed to abide by the policy, but would continually disregard the pastor's, you know, wishes. So, he, he basically let him have it. He let him have it across the pulpit for everyone to hear. I agree that the pulpit was probably not the best place for him to come across. And that's the whole thing. I guess that's the bottom line with me. I guess that's the bottom line with me is the way he came across. Across the pulpit. Like anybody who sees that would never want to go to that church if they were not as everyone else in the church. You know what I mean? Like, if they were not gay or, you know, if they were not lesbian or... I mean, how do you reach people when you come across to people like that? And that's true, too. You know what? That's another thing. Who did I hear say that? Um, 
I think it was the guest on uh, Madison's show the other day who said, no, that was actually Maddie. No, that was Maddie. She also said that. She said, you know what? What she don't understand about um, gay people or, you know, lesbians or transgenders, um, why do you go where you're not wanted? But the thing is, uh, you know, on the flip side, a lot of people like, really, really believe in God and believe in worship and, and wants the church family. And I mean, how many churches are there out there that, uh, that are solely built, not solely built, but were built to, um, to welcome the transgender, the gays, the lesbians, the, you know, the questionable, you know, the whole community, um, it's not a lot of churches out there like that. I guess if it was probably more, like at least one in each city or, you know, a couple in each city, it might be easier for some of them. I mean, I don't, I don't know how I feel. It's like you have to stay home to worship God and, and we can worship God anywhere. We can worship God in our closet, in our car, at work, in the bathroom. Um, but I just feel, you know, a lot of people don't go to church because of this right here. What did Black Mirror say? I wonder how a mini skirt and low cut top would be addressed. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. Matter of fact, let me see. I, I have, I think I had another photo in here. Hold on. I have an I have another photo that I wanted to show you guys. Uh hold on. This this had me gagging. Hold on one second. I thought I had my um I could have sworn. One second. Let me pull this screen over here. Okay. One moment. I have to switch the photo over to my other. I got several computers up here. Okay. Here it is. All right. Let me upload it real quick or download it on my laptop. I was like, what the what? Hold on, y'all. Y'all gonna trip when y'all see this. Okay, here's the other picture that I wanted to show y'all. Okay, that's the gay man. For those of y'all who are coming in, the man that we're talking about that was kicked out of the church, this is him on the left with a big fan. His name is Antoine. Antoine or Antoine, I think. Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't want to misquote his name. His name is Antoine Haywood. That's the guy that was kicked out of the church because he was dressed in drag. And I just wanted to show that real quick for the people who are just now coming in. But, and here is the picture that I wanted to show y'all. Okay, now, allegedly, allegedly, this is, y'all can see this picture? The girl in the middle with the glasses, allegedly. This picture is going all over the internet and YouTube videos and everything because this is the pastor's gay daughter with the little little dress the glasses on the little blue jean jacket with the little spots the little white spots on there um everybody's making videos about this 
this picture. I don't I, I don't know if they got these pictures off his Facebook or off his social media. Um, but I found it when I was going through um when I was going through uh some videos. When I when I first heard about it and I was watching videos on this, I was like, What? A pastor came somebody at the church. Then they said, uh, and this is his daughter who's gay. And the first thing that crossed my mind was is this how you treat your own children too? If they're not straight like you want them to be? Are they not allowed in your church? The way he was acting on that pulpit, I wonder if they even allowed in his home. Are they allowed over on holidays? It's about to be Thanksgiving in two days. I wonder. I wonder. There were some other photos um, that I saw too that was uh, connected to this photo. But I just thought I'd just get this one. But um, I was like, you kick this man out of church because he's gay or, you know, dressed in drag. And you actually have a child that is also gay. I was like, kind of done. Kind of done. Like, crazy. I don't know. What y'all think about that? Like, really? What do y'all think about that? Mm-mm. <laughs> What's you say, Blazing? <laughs> you said Will Smith wore crop tops on Fresh Prince, and it was fine. <laughs> you right. You right. Oh, my God. <laughs> One of my favorite shows back then. <laughs> he used to wear those little shirts and would have shirts underneath or something like that. I, I remember. And they were always like bright colors, like fluorescent, green, yellow, pink, all kind of different colors. I remember. But um, Black Mirror, you said this is the most you've heard about the story. But wow. Okay, would he want his daughter discriminated? Right, that's what I'm saying. And I wonder if he discriminates against his own daughter. I mean, the way he come off across that stage, I mean that stage, that uh pulpit, I was floored. Like I was so floored. Like, even if you did tell one of your um parishioners that you didn't want them to no longer dress like a woman in your church. And even if you told them like three times, if you told them a dozen times, I still don't think that's right to shame them on the pulpit like that. And then he was like, and show everybody. You saw in the video, he was like, and show everybody. You can spread it all across the world. I don't care. You know, I'll say it again. I'll say it to anybody. And then he said, and if you are gay, challenge me, try me. Did y'all hear that? He said, try me. Try me if you want to. And that's where a lot of people were saying, you know, he, he, he quickly went from this is being God's temple. This is God's church. We just come here to worship. And that's what church is. You just come there to worship and you invite all those who want to worship with you. And, I mean, if you want to counsel your members or offer them counseling and everything like that, I mean, and then you think they should be straight, should not be gay, um, you counsel them, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, just, I just didn't like the video at all. I just thought it was so shameful. It was just, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Just terrible, as my sister would say. Just terrible. <laughs> I don't know if she's watching right now, but that's her. <laughs> Just terrible, Tanya. Just terrible. <laughs> but yeah, it was just terrible. And I'm like, oh my God. He just... You said this reminds you of me. If you're free from sin, throw the first stone. Yep. What you say, Blazing? I got a crop top. Hell, Mickey Mouse once. <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> you is crazy. But just to think that he, oh my God, they were um, saying uh, basically um, 
that because the gay guy or the, or the guy who was dressed, dressed in drag, because he um, was told more than several times to not come to church anymore and drag, that the man, the pastor, I guess they were saying something about, you know what, it was his his pride or something. His uh, what did they say? Uh, not his pride. Uh, what word am I thinking of? But basically, because the man didn't listen to him, and he was basically angry that the man didn't listen to him. His ego. That's what I was thinking about. His ego. It was like. At that point, when he started going off, like when he was saying, challenge me to all the gays and lesbians and transgender, challenge me, try me, come to my church if you want to. Basically trying to say, you can try to step foot up in here, dress as the opposite sex, or even looking like you, um, or walking like you gay or anything, try me and I'm going to kick you out. That's what he's basically saying. Just put a door on the sign of the church. No gays allowed. He might as well do that. And I'm not like no uh, big pro gay or pro lesbian. I'm not like, I'm just human. And when I see something that's not right, you know, I, I, it, it's just not right. And people need to discuss stuff like this. We don't have that many churches everywhere to accommodate people like this who um, get thrown out of churches, who gets rejected from churches, just just cast out, just cast out of churches. And right, Black Mirror, throw the first stone. Ye who are with sin, throw the first stone. That's right from the Bible. Come as you are. And that's why I made this video. Because I truly wanted to know what other people thought about the true meaning of come as you are. Because from this video, it basically says you can come drunk. You can come high. You can come broke. You can come poor. You can come with raggedy clothes on. But if you're not straight, you don't supposed to come into the church. That's what it said. That's that's basically what I'm getting out that video from that pastor, Pastor Antonio. Live and let you live. Yes, honey. I always say I don't judge people. I mean, if you know me like really, really well, like my really close friends and family, they know the last thing I try to do ever is judge people. Because I done came from the bottom, and I'm not at the top. <laughs> I ain't Drake. <laughs> I done came from the bottom, but I'm not at the top. I'm somewhere like in in the middle and in, in between. So you know, I ain't I ain't like that. Sure, I done lived in every hood in my city. I done been struggling before when you know in my younger years. I had a child young by myself. Um, I don't judge people. I don't judge people. That's the last thing I want because I don't like to be judged. I don't like my actions to be judged. I'll leave that up to the man upstairs. To the man upstairs. But I know people. I know people who do not allow their children to come to their houses, to come over for dinner, to come over for holidays. They won't come to their house either if they're not straight. And I just feel like this. This is my thing. And some of my best cousins and friends are gay. Um, again, I don't judge people. I, I I live and let live. Like you said, Black Mirror, I live and let live. Uh, I, I love you like I want to be loved. I treat you like I want to be treated. If you don't cross me, we all good. We all good. Um... But as far as people who are gay or lesbian, um, I welcome them in my home. I know some people don't. It, it's nothing to me. It's nothing to me. Some of them are the coolest people you could ever know. 
the most caring people you could ever know, the most giving people you could ever know are gay and lesbian and transgender. Shoot, we got so many straight hellions around here, it's ridiculous. But then they want to point the finger and tell you, you can't come to church to praise your Lord. Like, gay people can't believe in God just because they're gay. I think the pastor was totally wrong like most of you guys. But again, I wanted to hear opinions from other people. Um, the phone lines are still open. Hold on, somebody come commented on my... Is this the other YouTube... Um, let's see. Oh, that's Shish Trish. Where's she at? Is Shish Trish in the chat? She commented on my other YouTube page. For you people, um, who don't know, I do have another YouTube channel. Um, I'm obviously not going live from that channel right now. <laughs> but it's called Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. I'm telling somebody right now to come over to the other channel because they're commenting on my notification that I put on my other channel about my live tonight. But um, if anybody wants to call in, the phone number again is 641-715-0872, access code 434-478. And real quick, thank you, Blazin. Thank you for tuning in tonight, and you have a wonderful evening as well. And happy holidays if I don't talk to you again before Thursday. But I'm going for the people who just uh got on the line real quick. I'm gonna play the video just in just in case some people did not see the video earlier. I mean it's all across social media and it went viral, but just in case some people did not see the video, I am going to replay the video for those. And it's about a three minute video. So one second. Let me just rewind it. Okay, I'm about to play it right now. You said I'm in the aisle, please. <laughs> Can you leave my church and go put on main clothes? And don't come here like that no more. Thank you, Jesus. I, I hold a standard in here. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do on the outside is your business. But I would not let drag queens come in here. And y'all gonna come in here, you're gonna dress like a man. Now, whatever you do on the outside, <coughs> that's your business. But when you come in this house, if you're a man, dress like a man. If you're a woman, you dress like a woman. I'm not going to allow it. My salvation is more important. And God is holding me accountable. Now, whatever you do outside these doors, I don't bash, I don't judge. But when you come in here, you will not be a drag queen. The Holy Ghost tell me in my spirit, that is drag queen sitting here with wigs on. I'm going to ask you to be removed from the sanctuary. You cannot, I will not play this game. You will not, I don't care if you don't clap and you don't like it, don't come here. You will not be playing wigs and heels and fooling people up in here. You can fool people, but see, I got the Holy Ghost for real. I can pick your spirit up in the back of the church. Hallelujah. Now, if you, if you don't know me, don't come here and play with me. Okay, I can pick the spirit up. He was bothering my spirit. I had to see what he had on. Because that's a man, that's not a woman. Now, whatever you do on the outside, between you and God, you can dress drag all day. But you got to respect the rule of the house. 
And I ain't been allowed as other churches. But if I know you a man with a wig on, I'm either going to snatch that wig off or you got to get up out of here. Because as for me and my house, say y'all ain't talking. You ain't got to never come back here, but you're not going to wear no heels in here. Come on. Anybody that know my preaching, you know I don't call fags. Come on, come on. I don't do I don't do no bashing because everybody is struggling with something. But what I'm not gonna do is allow you to disrespect the house of God. Now, that I can't do. You call me, talk about me, put me on live today. Come on. Okay, you can spread this all over the world and tell every drag to come, come and try me. Because I stand for holiness. I can't make nobody live right, but I'm going to make you respect this house at 70, 40 Southwestern or don't come here. Come on, come on. Come here throwing no weed and you a man. Come on. Come on. We're not, we're not going to do that down up in here. Come on, come on, come on. I knew something was messing with my Come on, man. Now, other churches will go for it because they like the compromise mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why the Holy Ghost can't dwell there. Come on. The spirit and the real authentic oil can't dwell where you compromise and mess. Come on. Come on, sir. Now, I know I ain't going to get too many people to scream when I say this, but holiness is still right. See, that's not My bad, I forgot to turn up the volume. Um, thank you, Black Mirror. Thank you, honey. But yeah, he was um that's for those who came in late. That video for those who came in late, for those who came in the chat late, um, who didn't get to see the video as it's going viral and it's still going viral. It's a lot of websites out there that's discussing this, a lot of YouTubers. Um, that's discussing that video. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll be forgetting when I'm playing, um, uh, playing videos for y'all to watch, I have to turn down my mic and just play the, uh, internet, uh, sound or, you know, the sound from the computer. Otherwise it's all muffled and distorted. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure that out. <laughs> By the way, I was like, why every time I play a video for my, uh, subscribers from off the internet or something it's always distorted but i realized i had to have my mic off and so thank you <laughs> thank you but again you guys who did not see the video i will um put the link in the chat so you can watch it later but um or you can just look up pastor Antonio Rockamore from Chicago, Illinois, the pastor who kicked out the drag. One second. Let me just put this link in here real quick. Oh, after the video, I was just saying, um, after the video had went off, I was just saying that video was just, you know, a replay for the people who came in the chat let, late or for people who didn't um, get to watch the video when I first started my live. So that's all I was saying at the beginning of the video. But um, I just think it was so harsh and so rude and so demeaning and so unchristian-like. 
like so unchristian like so many people who proclaim to be christians act so unchristian like when it comes to their brothers and their sisters um i will never not believe that gay lesbian trans transgenders i will never not believe that they cannot believe in god and that they cannot worship god and that they cannot be healed or anything just like people who are straight i will never not believe that hey denia we just talking about those um that video that went viral with that pastor antonio rockmore <laughs> but yeah how do you feel about that oh yeah and also the phone lines are still open if anybody want to call in um the phone number is listed 641-715-0872 access code 434-478 but yeah, we just been discussing that video that went viral with the pastor who kicked the man out that was dressed in drag. And everybody's just commenting on it and giving their, you know, comments. He said they probably pray more. Right. 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 And some people don't go to church at all. And it's mainly because a lot of people are so hypocritical. Hypocritical. Like... And then I had showed the picture earlier of the, the girl that they're saying is the pastor's daughter who is a gay, you know, she's a stud, dressed like a guy, you know, looks like a guy. Uh, and that's his daughter. And I'm just thinking, does he treat her the same way? Is she not allowed at the church? Is she not allowed at his house, period? Holidays, you know, birthdays, vacations. I just can't imagine him treating his anybody any better, even if they are family, the way he treated that man. It was just shameful. I just thought it was really shameful. Um, again, I can see the, the pastor having an issue with somebody dressing as a woman who's not a woman. Um, but I also believe that he should have done it a whole different way. If you talk to that person over and over and told them you don't want them dressing as a woman no more when they come to your church, I think what he should have done was as soon as he seen him in that sh in that pulp in, in the you know from the pulpit, as soon as he saw him out there on the pews, maybe even take a moment, get a mic up to somebody else, tell the uh, person in charge of the choir, please, please sing a song. Intermission, intermission. <laughs> I need a break and go maybe take the young man to the side, back into the office, something, and let him know what you want to say to him. Or, you know, either wait till after church service and say what you got to say to him. I don't agree in kicking people out the church that are not straight. I just will never agree with that. But there was a there was an entirely better way to do it. And then the fact, like they were saying, it was all about his ego, all about what he can do. All like when he was threatening, basically threatening gay people on the video. Try me if you want to. I challenge you. Try me if you want to. Come to my church if you want to. You'll find yourself getting kicked out too, just like Anton Antoine. That's what he was saying. You in the pulpit, you a pastor over congregation, and you telling gay people to try you if you want to? That's not proper. That's not proper at all. <laughs> that is not Christian like at all. If you feel they have a if you feel they are sinners and they are sinning, and if you feel like they gonna burn and you ain't. There's another way to go about that situation, another approach. And it's just sickening. It's disgusting. It, it is not surprising. I just never seen it that bad before. Like, he was telling people who were recording 
Like he knew people were recording him. He was telling people who were recording. And you can send this everywhere. You can post this anywhere. I don't care. I don't care. I'll say it again. Matter of fact, y'all try me. Gay people try me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this, this, where did this whole thing just, oh my God. It was like, so, oh my God. And I wonder how he feels now after it went viral. I wonder, does he feel like he's done something wrong? Is he regretting his actions about this going viral? Is he embarrassed? Is he ashamed? That's what I want to know. And then he did make a video about, um, matter of fact, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Let me find it. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find a response video. Let's see, is this it? Hold on one second. Let me see if this is the right. That they wanted to be a member of his. All for anything. Dead people speak to me. You said I'm in the eye of this. Can you leave my church and go put on main clothes? And don't come here like that no more. Thank you, Jesus. I, I hold a standard in here. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do on the outside, is your business. And I will not let drag queens come in here. And y'all gonna come in here, you're gonna dress like a man. Now, whatever you do on the outside, that's your business, but when you come in this house, if you a man, dress like a man. If you a woman, you dress like a woman. I'm not going to allow it. My salvation is more important. Amen. And God is holding me accountable. Amen. Now, whatever you do outside these doors, I don't bash. Okay, I'm trying to find the uh, video. I think I found it. This is just crazy. Okay. Let's see, was it NBC? Okay. Oh, I guess I can't find it right now. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, I know he was. I know they said he wasn't apologizing. I did see that much. But some people were saying, some people were also saying, good job, Pastor. You know, like, that's what you're supposed to do. And then he also was saying in that video that he wasn't, uh, what did he say? He wasn't bashing. He wasn't bashing him or he wasn't bashing gay people or transgendered or, you know, people who dress in drag. But um, it sure sounded like he was bashing to me. Lorraine, what you say? <laughs> hey, <laughs> you said you saw this foolishness the other day and I'm not going to cuss and I'm not going to cuss me out. Boycott, you said boycott the church. 
he did you said uh let's see denia oh you said bet he doesn't give the same treatment to those men with multiple women and children oh right and that's the thing that's what people were saying like when i was watching the maddie show the other day when they had um talked about it and again you know like i mentioned earlier in my video a lot of people who are gay or transgendered or lesbian you know who dresses um you know men or guys um when they come up in the church, you can't help but notice their outward appearance. And then immediately they get targeted as, oh, look at this sinner. Here comes this sinner. Now, this is how the people in the church thinks. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. A lot of them is like, okay, here come this person. They look at this. Just a sin. Just a sin. Just a crime shame. Just a sin. That's how they see it. But... How many women are in church, like you said, who's having babies out of wedlock? I know plenty of people who got kids, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and on up, kids. And they go to church all the time, and they have they, the whole pew, the pew be sold up with just them and their kids. Ain't no man in sight. Ain't never been married. Ain't never been engaged. But they ain't kicking them out. The, they ain't kicking them out. And, and that's that's what I hate the most is that some of these people, um, pastors, preachers, church members, um, some of these people just treat them like they is like the worst person on earth. The worst person who's done the worst sin you could ever imagine that you could ever imagine. And I think there are a whole lot worse sins than being with the opposite sex, a whole lot worse sins than being with the opposite sex. So let's see murder, uh, pedophiles, um, <laughs> you said, sorry, cuss on here. That's some BS. Shoot. <laughs> you cuss if you want to cuss. Shoot. I might not cuss that much on my videos, but that's just because I just try not to. But I'm not, again, I don't judge nobody. If you want to say, damn it, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I'm just kidding around playing with y'all. But you know what I mean. If you feel a certain, some people will bring that out of you. Some people will make you feel a certain type of way. We human. You said you were so mad, at that, so mad at that mess. I'm from Chicago and I'm so embarrassed by the mess that comes out from there. And it's not just there. It's not just there. It's not. It's not just there. I just wish pastors, I don't know, I don't know how to fix this problem. I really don't know how to fix this problem. Like, like, um, hmm, should they have some kind of sensitivity training? Some type of, I mean, you're a pastor. And if you've been pastor for a long time, you should know certain ways to come across to your members you should know that to your members you are not supposed to try to berate them or try to put them down or you know cast stones this is not <laughs> this is not before christ <laughs> this is not the before christ ages this is the ad ages I mean, a lot has changed. Even in the New Testament, a lot has changed. A lot of things that we couldn't do in the Old Testament, it was wiped away in the New Testament. And then there came grace and mercy with the death of Jesus Christ. I mean, it's just, it's horrible. You said that's nicer what I was going to say. <laughs> I got you, Lorraine. I can kind of imagine what you want to say. <laughs> I can kind of imagine. Danaya said, cancel those fools too. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But 
this is a conversation that needs to be spoken about. Um, I just hate how some people just, they just feel like they're just not welcome. It's like, it's such a horrible feeling to feel like you're not welcome. And then for the people who might be gay or, you know, bi or trans or lesbian, you know, whatever, um, who maybe possibly really are trying to be straight just because they feel themselves that is not right. Coming into the church and trying to get prayer, trying to get, you know, uh, a message from the preacher, trying to get, you know, uh, counseling or something. How will they come to the church for that when they see videos like this? I mean, and this, like, uh, who was that, Lorraine? You said, you know, you, it's sad you see that in Chicago, but it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It just don't happen to always be leaked into social media. And that's one thing, one reason why I love social media. A lot of people, social media, you know, uh, you know, thumbs down, thumbs down, like on Facebook, thumbs down. <laughs> but um, a lot of these things come to light for a reason, not accidentally, not accidentally. A lot of these videos come to light for a reason. These kind of videos, videos of cops beating and shooting people with no reason, um, all these white people act out here, um, trying to act like the po-po, calling the cops on anything that a black person does. Oh, they blinked my direction. You can't do that over here. <laughs> and call the cops. <laughs> you know, you barbecuing over here. You can't barbecue. You can't do this. You can't sell, uh, lemonade or water in front of your house. I mean, so many, uh, White people have made phone calls on black people over some BS, like for real. And when it goes uh, me goes across the media and goes viral, I done seen it left and right. Them same people who call the cops get fired from their jobs. But, but it happens more than not. It's just certain things were meant to go viral for a reason. This needs to be out there. This this situation needs to be handled much more differently. You said they have to want better. <laughs> but anywho, you guys, I'm going to turn the phone lines off because I, I guess nobody wanted to call in tonight. Lord, 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 today. I am glad we had this discussion, though. Um, thanks for everybody who put their input in in the chat. Um, you said it's very horrible, but if the ones who cast them out don't want to get better and more accepting, it's not going to change. I agree. I agree. They just want to know that they are... Loved, accepted, support. I knew that's what you was getting at. <laughs> I knew you either ran out of room to type in the comment section or you hit enter too soon. But I knew that's what you was getting at. They just want to feel loved. They just want to feel supported. And, you know, just not like a castaway. Not like a castaway. It's all about treating people the way you want to be treated. And pastors like that, they should not pastor. They should not pastor. They should not have not one flock, not one sheep to shepherd if they are going to act that way towards people. It's just wrong. It's completely wrong. Um, that's my final answer. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. And again, I'm not somebody who's like, oh, I'm pro this. I'm pro this. I'm anti this. Anti this. I'm just human. And I treat people the way I want to be treated. And I try my best not to judge people because I don't want to be judged by nobody but the man upstairs. That's it. That's it. Bottom line. <laughs> you said ran out the room. Oh. 
<laughs> but yep, everybody, make sure if you didn't like this video, please like the video before you leave the room. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber. And please share this video. A lot of people don't know what's going on um, with this situation. This video needs to get out there. Maybe, maybe it will help churches and pastors and church members to maybe think about how they treat people, you know, of uh, 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 people that are different from us. You know, people who are different from us, people who might not live the same life we live, who might, might not walk the same walk we walk. They are still people. They are still human. And as, until somebody proves me wrong, they are also God's children, just like every other single one of us. Even us sinners, even us sinners, we all have sinned and we still do. We still do. It may not be a big old sin. It may not be something to lock you up for. But we all sin. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. And when, when, when the Bible says nobody's perfect, all have sinned and came short of the glory of God, we all have sinned and we all will continue to sin because we are not perfect. We might not even mean to sin. And I'm just, I'm not trying to sound like no preacher because I'm definitely not a holy roller and I'm definitely not a saint. I go to church as often as my job allows me, <laughs> which is at least, at least like three or four times a month I'm in church. I love church. I love my church. I love my pastor. I love my first lady. I love my congregation. Um, but we all have sinned, you know. And, and that's the bottom nine. Good night, Black Mirror. I'm about to get off here, too. <laughs> uh, thank you, Black Mirror. Make sure you please visit again. And you guys, again, make sure you like the video. Make sure you also subscribe to my other YouTube channel. My other YouTube channel is Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. My uh, Twitter is the same name, Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. My Instagram, my IG is Tanya Primetime TV, all one word. And again, in the link, like the first link in the chat, matter of fact, I'll put it in there again. The first link in the chat is our uh, Facebook group because I have a Facebook group called Tanya's Primetime TV. And over there, we discuss different shows, reality shows, celebrity news, trending news, you know, the same as we do over here. It's a closed group, so you do have to click on the link that says request to join, and then I'll add you to the group. But, um, so yes, make sure you please do that. And I'm going to get off of here because I have a lot of cakes to make. As most of you know, I'm a custom uh, a personal custom cake decorator. Um, and matter of fact, let me put that link on there too. Uh, let's see. It's called Tanya's Delights. Slice by slice. Tanya's Delights. Slice by slice. Don't even ask me how I came up with that name. <laughs> but I wanted something catchy. I wanted something different. And I asked people. I even made a Facebook post years ago, a few years back, <laughs> asking people what I should call the name of my cake decorating um, company. <laughs> and people was giving me all kind of names. Tanya Cakes. Tanya this. Tanya that. And so I just came up with Tanya's Delight, slice by slice, slice by slice. Um, I am a custom cake decorator, a uh, personal custom cake decorator. And um, I make cakes, everything from wedding cakes to cupcakes to uh, I make treats, like party table treats. Matter of fact, let me... Um, go over to my page real quick so I can show you some of my work. Just just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I post my cakes and stuff over there. I also post uh, 
um, advertise my YouTube channel over there as well, too. So you'll see a combination of stuff on that page. But let me go over there real quick. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oops, wrong one. Okay, here we go. Let me make the screen the uh, screen bigger. Let's see, internet. Okay, here we go. Okay, move that out the way. Okay, um, okay, now this first picture right here. Because I have promotions every month and for holidays where I give out free cakes. Um, for people who are in my local area, my community, um, because I don't ship cakes. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, not right now. Not right now. It'll come in the future, but not right now. Um, but I have a free promotion every month for people who subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, they get a choice to win. They get the, to try to win a choice of four different cakes. These are a few of my designs. All of my cakes look totally different. I can make a thousand cakes and they'll all look different. Um, I'm a custom cake decorator, <laughs> but anywho, um, top left, a strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake next to it, a banana pudding cake under the strawberry cake. There's a, um, Oreo crunch cake. And next to that is a chocolate Reese's peanut butter cake. Those are the four options that people have, uh, for cakes. Um, as far as winning, I do over 20 different flavors, but those are the four choices for free cake. This is a cake I did the other day. Somebody wanted that for their husband. Um, they messed with that Bombay, that liquor. Oh, my God. That liquor is so strong. Um, they wanted me to put some uh, in strawberries and stuff and in the cake. And when I opened the bottle, when they brought me the bottle, I almost died from just opening the bottle. Um, here's one of the cakes I made for my church on Halloween. We had like a harvest fest party instead of a Halloween party, you know, for the kids. Uh, <clears throat> that's one of the cakes I made. Um, that's the other cake I made. My first lady of my church had me make two cakes for the cakewalk contest. It's kind of like musical chairs. You play musical chairs and whoever, um, wins a specific chair or something like that, they win a cake. Um, here's a cake I had made somebody. It's a chocolate Reese's peanut butter cake, um, for, I think it's for this lady's husband and he likes Florida State Seminoles and she wanted a picture of the Florida State on there. Um, here's some cupcakes I did for a little girl who turned 14. They were so cute and pretty. She's like a really girly girl. So I made them really girly for her mother. Um, I'm just going to show y'all a few of them. Here's a cake I did for the Super Bowl. One of my friends, um, ordered this for her boyfriend. It's a, a Super Bowl cake. It's designed to look like a football field, obviously. And he was an Eagles fan. Um, here's another cake I did for a fan who was a Saints for a football party. Um, it was actually his birthday as well. And he liked Parmesan. The cake is actually, actually a whiskey cake. I make whiskey cakes where I cook cakes with whis whiskey inside. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's called Triple Chocolate, uh, Triple Chocolate Whiskey Cakes. Um, here's a cake I did. Somebody, uh, they're an artist. Yeah, they were artists. And they wanted a cake for their baby shower and they wanted the theme to be art painting you know stuff like that so um they actually oh there's some cupcakes i made for a husker fan um they actually gave me this this is what they inboxed me on my facebook and they said this is what we want so <laughs> from that sketch i did this which is the back of the cake. All this is edible, by the way. Made out of fondant. There's frosting and fondant combination. That's the back of the cake. 
And this is the front of the cake. And it has like an easel and it also has a few baby things on there like a pacifier. They wanted pacifiers and a few bottles, but they mainly want the cake to look like, you know, an artist, artist theme uh, cake. So those are a few of the things that I do. Um, again, I do over 20 different flavors. I do custom design, whatever people um, give me to make. I try my best to give them what they vision. Um, that was for somebody for, uh, that was actually for a little boy. I think he was 12. And he told his mom he wanted some July 4th cupcakes for his birthday because his birthday fell on July. Um, and then I also do uh, children's stuff. Like this particular parent wanted a Lion King thing, theme. For her child's birthday party so all these little toppers and stuff are made out of fondant i create them by hand piece by piece eyeball by eyeball um you know stuff like that and i'll show you one last one what's oh here's one i did for a teacher this one um for a teacher one of my good friends uh she has a friend who's a teacher and she wanted a teacher theme. She didn't even expect that it would look quite like that. <laughs> she was like, oh my God, because the teacher teaches grade school. So she completely was in love with it. And her friend, who is the teacher, whose birthday it was, she was absolutely in love with the cupcakes. But anyway, and all that stuff is edible, the books, the, the crayons, the rulers, the alphabets, all that is edible fondant. So you can eat that. So anywho, just want to show y'all a little bit of what I do. When I say I am a custom cake decorator, I am a custom cake decorator. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm making you hungry. <laughs> well, that's that's what I do. That's my, you know, that's my love. That's what I I really love baking and decorating cakes and, you know, um, my uh, car on my license plate says cake art. And whenever somebody see me coming by, they be like, cake art. You make cakes? Yeah, I do. Would you like a business card? <laughs> But anywho, you guys, <laughs> I really do have to get, I told my son like two hours ago to take my eggs out so they can come to room temperature because I have a lot of baking to do. I'm going to start tonight, probably go to about, uh, probably about three or four in the morning. And then probably after I get all my cakes done, then I'll take a little nap. This is like my routine. I start around 11 midnight bake all the way through to like the morning, take a little nap. Then I get up, um, take my butters out because I make all my frostings, everything homemade. Take my butters out, um, my cream cheeses for my cheesecakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, not my cheesecakes, but for my uh, cream cheese frosting because I got carrot cake orders. I got uh, cheesecake orders. I got banana pudding cake orders. I got cupcakes. I got all kind of stuff. So anywho, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be up all night. So or if there's people out there who's recording videos late into the night, <laughs> you might see me comment in your chat. <laughs> or I'm be up watching movies or Netflix or something. Anything to keep me entertained while I'm baking. But anywho, you guys, thanks again for tuning in to the chat. This We had a great conversation. Um... And again, everybody, if anybody's just coming into the chat, um, please start the video all over from the beginning if you came in late um, so you can see everything we discussed. And also make sure, again, you don't forget to subscribe to my other YouTube channel, Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. And you guys, Primetime Squad, as usual, you already know. In the meantime and in between time, stay safe. Be blessed. And I'm out. Deuces. Oh, and happy holidays. Oh, how did I forget to say that? Please, everybody, I want you to have a safe, enjoyable, fun, memorable, 
Thanksgiving holiday and weekend. Try not to spend too much money over Black Friday. I will too. I'm going to try not to spend too much money. But anyway, make it memorable. Life is so short. Life is too short. All these fires out here, all these missing people in California from these flyers, um, fires, um, the, the doctor that was just gunned down in the, L I mean, at the hospital. I mean, it's so much stuff tragedies going on in this world so many people sick and dying and just a lot going on so please try to make your holidays memorable memorable it's not all about who did what who apologized or not apologize just try to enjoy yourselves enjoy your family enjoy your loved ones and again try not to spend too much money on black friday weekend <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm out. Happy Thanksgiving.